The idea behind the commercial is that our hero, the squirrel, plants a seed which is an acorn, and that ends up being the seed of the bank, which was established in 1820. And then we stay with the squirrel as the landscape around it and the eras change, and we follow through the various seasons, through these eras, um, to modern day. The puppets were made here in this very room at Ardman, Mr Squirrel, and the duck and the hedgehog and, and a few other characters. The most interesting part of this brief was that they actually wanted to use techniques, model making techniques, that we haven't used for quite a few years, so they sort of wanted to go back in time a little bit. This is the hedgehog puppet. Initially I did a sculpt and then we took moulds. Into those moulds we injected foam latex over an armature and then it's very similar to cooking, we bake it in an oven for three hours and then on top of that we start to individually lay these little strands of fur until you get to the area where the fur starts to be really short and then flock it and flocking it's a little machine that holds tiny little 3.5 millimeter fibers and you have a little electric charge that goes from the flocking machine to the puppet you connect the electric charge and that makes it positive and when you shake all the flock from the flocking machine they all fly end on boom and then stick all over the puppet to give this lovely little fur effect and really we haven't done that kind of thing for a long time because it gives the animators a lot of problems when they're animating but um, the client were quite happy about that we told them all the problems that they get while they're animating and, and they were happy about it the clothes have to be animatable as well they, they haven't only just got to look good and look great the animators got to have complete control over the puppet and this, the clothes that he's wearing as well in the end, it's a really satisfying process because it's hard work, but you know, like any hard creative work that you do, at the end of it, there's, you know, there's something to look at, to hold, and to see animated. So it is, it's a great job to be on. Right from the start, I said I wanted to try and do everything in camera. For example, the skies. Um, we could have shot all the sets and characters on blue screen and then dropped skies in afterwards. But there were problems with dropping things in blue screen afterwards because you've got a furry puppet which has got a kind of soft edge around it and you've got a tree with kind of hundreds and hundreds of leaves. So in a way there was quite a lot less cheating than possibly we would do normally in post. And doing it all for real just looks better really. I'm working at the moment on the largest of the autumn cloths, the final one. I've been doing, going through the seasons which have been very pleasant. Over the ages right from Scanachrome onwards scenic art has been told it was dead and I've been told I would never work again. I first told that about 25 years ago. The computer works lovely for editing, very fast, very quick, which I can't do. But I can add that personal touch of paint and depth that is very difficult for a computer to achieve. And I work from a very old tradition that's hundreds and hundreds of years old. My DRP was a, a gentleman called Mr Mark Chamberlain, who's quite a character. And um, I've worked with him quite a few times now and we get on really well. And it's just great having that support when you need it, you know, when you're busy. and and uh, having people who can be honest with you. The lighting, I had a kind of a, a specific idea that I wanted it to be quite atmospheric and um, suspenseful. And Mark added a kind of extra drama to that because he particularly likes things that are quite dark. And um, um, I think Amelie and, and, and um, Delicatessen were kind of a few um, sort of inspirations on the lighting. Well, one of the jobs I like the most, which I like doing commercials, is the fact that I always get given something someone says is impossible to do and that's what gives me a buzz and I'll always find a way of doing it so this is another one of those jobs where we're cheating all sorts of things and scales and it, it, it's all coming together really nicely. Well, the reason I like working like this is because you're dealing with real 3D objects and uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a much more organic looking finish. Um, you know, I mean I can get results off, even off digital stills cameras now that much, most people think were shot on film. But it's really trying to find what part of the palette to use in order to make the best of what the look is. And I like to wait till I'm on set with the director and, and get the emotion from him or her at that point and that's when I start my bit of the work which is to just feed off that and then we collaborate. It's basically doing, doing a giant painting with a, a whole bunch of people that you get on really well with. When we've finished shooting everything in camera then we do add certain elements in post. The more sort of ethereal effects that are kind of hard to animate. Anything like water, steam, snow, rain, always kind of you know better to 
add on afterwards, but you've got to do it in a sensitive way. We're really lucky at Arbon because we get the best of the work that's around the world and, uh, and it's a real pleasure when a really good one like this comes along. Our story started with a simple idea. The one who saves is never empty-handed. Hey, I'm living in the best place. Time passed and the idea grew into something larger. There, around the oak tree, you could have a better life. As the saying goes, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Come on, birds are meant to be flying. OK. Today, many of us realise the importance of a robust and sound economy. What could possibly go wrong? And preferably, try to avoid getting in over our heads. Are you still there? Sell! Here, life has grown since 1820. Welcome in under the oak tree.